reptiles make fights. If that is true, then Asim Hamed could easily end up as one of the best fighters of all time. Too strong, too fast and too good. His entertaining ring entrances, including walking to the ring in a fashion catwalk style, being suspended in an elevator, extravagant fireworks and lightning, and dance numbers, to name a few. I'm an entertainer and a banger and a champion too. When a young Floyd Mayweather was torching the junior lightweight division in the late 90s, few of his most optimistic supporters could have predicted what a huge star he would become. I wasn't just born to be a champion, I was born to be a superstar. It took him years of pugilistic perfection and time spent in De La Hoya's shadow before he would eventually become the game's biggest star. I would like to fight President Asim. Hopefully we can meet at 128. However, what if he had met the widely popular and equally lauded Nassim Hamed in 2001? It's a good job that he didn't fight me though, because he might not have had the career that he did. The real question is how the result of that fight would have changed the career of Floyd Mayweather. It's remarkable to think about how just one fight could have changed the entire future of the sport. Born in Great Britain to parents who had immigrated from Yemen, Hamed grew up in Sheffield. I always knew that I wanted to be something outstanding. He became involved in youth boxing at an early age and it quickly became apparent that Hamed had a special talent. Come in here at seven and seven days a week, never miss. Such a great man, I mean Brendan, from an early age, as in from seven training. By the time he was 18, he had turned pro and was fighting in the flyweight division. Good shot. Body shot. He soon began rising through the ranks as he knocked out a series of opponents in the opening rounds. And when I plant my punches, see I'm just too strong. Watching a Prince Nassim Hamed fight was more than a boxing match. It was literally a spectacle. Nothing has been seen like this since Muhammad Ali back in the early 60s. They're going to love this kid and I think he'll be a big star. At the tender age of 20, Hamed fought for his first prestigious accolade, the European Bantamweight title. He is focused on becoming um, one of the best boxers in history. Hamed's popularity grew, his unorthodox style winning a large fan base and his boxing antics generating a large group of detractors. He's brought a new generation of fans to boxing. Oh. I feel like getting up and training at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, I'll train. In 1994, at just 21 years old, Hamed beat Steve Robinson, claiming the featherweight belt and becoming the youngest British fighter to become world champion. I'm an entertainer and a banger and a champion too. I'm not bragging anything, but I'm too good. He is a promoter's dream. You know, he's a young Muhammad Ali as far as promoting the fight's concerned. He says all the right things, does all the right things. Um, he's a dream to work with. The dream now is to become a legend. At his fleeting best, Hamed would go on a run of 18 stoppages in a row between August 1994 and April 1998, during which time he beat Daniel Alisea, Manuel Medina, Tom Johnson, Kevin Kelly and Wilfredo Vasquez to cement his status as the premier featherweight on either side of the Atlantic. He's seen the skill of the Prince and the strength and the ability and the accuracy and the speed. Oh gosh! The ability to see punches coming, that's why Ali never got hit, he doesn't get hit the same way. It's all about timing, rhythm, confidence, he's got it all. Hamed's ring entrances became stuff of legend. The winner of the sports entertainer of 1995 is Prince Nassim Hamad. His abrasive pre-fight interviews and lavish ring entrances managed to rub a lot of pundits up the wrong way. I don't like you Colin, well, you're a fool. Back in 1996, at the age of 19, Floyd Mayweather made his professional boxing debut as a super featherweight. Round number one. Towards the end of his first full year as a pro in October of 1997, Mayweather was already 10-0. I'm a performer, that's what I do, I sell myself. 
I don't, I don't need nobody to sell me, I can sell myself. By 1998, the quality of opposition Mayweather had steadily began to rise and he would become a champion for the first time that October by winning the WBC and lineal super featherweight titles. By the end of 1998, Mayweather was ranked by the ring as the number 8 pound for pound boxer in the world and became one of the youngest recipients of the ring fighter of the year award, aged only 21, the same age Sugar Ray Robinson and Muhammad Ali had won their first awards. Good press or bad press, just write about me. In 1999, Mayweather continued his domination over the super featherweight division by defending his title three more times. I'm looking forward to fighting Diego Corrales, I want to fight the best they got out there. In one of more defining and memorable fights of Mayweather's career was on January 20th, 2001 against the hard-hitting former IBF World Super Featherweight Champion Diego Corrales. Mayweather won every round and knocked down Corrales five times. I would like to fight Prince Nassim. Hopefully, we can meet at 128. Prince Nassim isn't going to fight you. Where, where want to see After that he saw this, really it ain't going to happen. You know, I really <laughs> want to fight Prince Nassim. By 2000, Prince Nassim Hamed was considered one of the best boxers of his generation. Strange, that little guy, he moves around. And you will never tell it, but he'd hit you as like he has a hammer in his glove. In August of that year, he successfully defended his featherweight title against Ogi Sanchez. He's at a critical stage in his career. He needs a big performance. But Hamed fractured his hand during the match, forcing him to take time off. And I spent seven months out of the gym. When he returned the following year, Hamed had put on 35 pounds. I had eight weeks to get two and a half stone off. His next target was a super fight against the up-and-coming Mexican federate Marco Antonio Barrera. I should have never taken that fight at that time because he was very, very active yeah. and fighting all the time. The lasting image of Hamed's career for most boxing fans is of him getting humiliated and then smashed into a turnbuckle by Marco Antonio Barrera. <laughs> Hamed's incredible hubris had finally come back to haunt him that one humbling Las Vegas night. Let's go, Antonio Barrera! From 1998 to 2000, British boxing legend Nassim Hamed and pound-for-pound -pound fighter Floyd Mayweather Jr. were the shining stars of their respective divisions. Napping Arena's head back. Oh, and a big left. During that time period, Hamed was a world champion and destroying everyone in the featherweight division, while Mayweather, also world champion, was outclassing everyone at super featherweight. I'm in the best shape in my life. You know, I gotta fight guys like this to make me prepare for guys like those. Fans were initially whispering and soon shouting for a mayweather Hamed matchup. I would like to fight President Nassim. Hopefully we can meet at 128. The fight never happened. I only have to get straight back in the gym and get back again like a champions, like champions do. Hamed was upset by Marco Antonio Barrera in 2001 and then retired in 2002 after one more fight. He didn't ever fulfill his full potential. I think he could have been a legend. I, I, I don't think he ever really loved training. Also in 2002, Mayweather left the Super Featherweight division and moved up to win a lightweight title from Jose Luis Castillo in the most debated outcome of Floyd's career. It's a good job that he didn't fight me though, because he might not have had the career that he did. The loss hurt his legacy so much that despite his many years of total ring dominance, he has yet to be inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Do you know anybody in the history of the sport that did what Prince Nassim did? I ain't trying to brag, but I was bloody good at it. It's a shame because Hamed was a force of nature in the ring. So far. Have he is unquestionably the hardest puncher in featherweight history. It's amazing where he gets his strength from, you know, like he's punching up from his legs. Hamed was also blessed with remarkable reflexes, which he used to create a highly unconventional style that made him a nightmare to deal with in the ring. That was a beautiful workout. Oh baby, I'm feeling so good.
at Junior Lightweight. Mayweather was as close to a perfect fighter as one can imagine. One, two, three, four, five, six, six His performances against Gennaro Hernandez and Diego Corrales were spellbinding. Stay focused, kept my composure, listened to my corner, and um, I got the job done. Because of his power, Hamed, especially if he was in top condition, would have been dangerous as long as he was standing. Second minute of the second round and I don't want you to blink. Whatever happens, don't blink in the second round. That said, Mayweather's full arsenal of sublime speed, punching power and technical perfection would have made my Smith of the more one-dimensional Hamet. When you look at him in the ring, you think he fights as naturally as a fish swims. The real question is how the result of that fight would have changed the career of Floyd Mayweather. It's remarkable to think about how just one fight could have changed the entire future of the sport.